I tried Unity's visual scripting system. When I heard that Unity was getting a visual scripting system, I was interested to see how it would work. I had assumed it would be similar to Unreal Engine's visual scripting system. This is a feature that Unity had lacked for a long time, especially compared to Unreal Engine, which has had a visual scripting system for a long time. Visual scripting is good if you don't know how to program or you are more on the artistic side of game development where you want to work on the art and the assets and you don't want to spend too much time into programming, you can use visual scripting. It's, it's probably faster to use compared to C Sharp or whatever programming language you're using. That does depend on your experience. Like, visual scripting can be easier, but you have to get used to the format. I found myself struggling to use the visual scripting system because every single block had a different name to it than the actual programming language. Bolt has two modes. There is a like a an English version as well as a programmer language version. So one is the English version are there's words that describe each of the block. And then there's the programmer language which is supposed to have the same programming syntax all written on the block as it would be if you're just typing out the words. However, I couldn't get the programmer language to work. I tried reinstalling Bolt, and every time when I booted up the project, I selected programmer language, and it just didn't work. It just brought me back to English, which it does have some ups and downs. Obviously, it's easier to understand for someone just starting out with programming, but for someone who knows a little bit of C Sharp, it got me really confused. It took me like 10 minutes to figure out where the if block was, and it turns out that the if block is called a branch block, which I guess makes sense because what the block does is it takes in an input and then has two separate paths on which the code could go, whether it be true or false. So I guess they're comparing it to a tree, but that made no sense to me, and I, it took me way too long to figure out where the if block was until I found it. Um, I would have I would have much preferred it if they had just called it an if block because I mean fifth grade me understood that loading in the scratch like Scratch there's the if block and it's it's right there. It's kind of self-explanatory if this do that So calling it a branch block is honestly a little bit less explanatory than having an if block the format of the visual scripting is very different than writing out code, quite obviously. You have to understand the the editor, the graph editor, is called a flow graph, and the the name is kind of self-explanatory there. The code flows from left to right. And if you actually run the code and take a look at the flow graph, you can see you can see the code running. There's little like circles that follow the flow of the code. So let's say you have like a branch block, an if block, and the code flows into that. If it's true, you'll see the you see the circles flow into the the true area, and you'll, if it's false, you see the circles flow into the false area. So that was really cool, and it does it does help honestly with debugging, because now you can see where your code is going wrong, which is really really nice. Also, whenever there's an error, it highlights the blocks in red, which is also really really nice for debugging. Which it's honestly it's harder to debug code that's written out because it it can get really huge whereas in the flow graph you can see where your code is going wrong what i did is i remade flappy bird that was my test i was going to make flappy bird using bolts um and i wrote two pieces of code here one is for the flow graph and one was in c sharp i rewrote the bird movement physics in c sharp and it took me like it wasn't that hard to write it in C Sharp, but writing it in the flow graph took a long time because I was trying to get used to the format. So I wrote I wrote two movement scripts for the birds. Both are completely identical, but one is written in C Sharp, while the other is written with the flow graph. So you can see both birds do the exact same thing. They kind of flap around, and then the pipes go in from the the left, the right side, and they kind of go across the screen. It's just like, it's just Flappy Bird. Everything in this example is made with the flow graph, except I have two birds. One is with the flow graph, and one was made with a C sharp script. So every time you click the mouse or press the keyboard, it flaps, and you gotta go through the pipes. 
it's Flappy Bird. You can see in both areas, you can see I have the code for getting the mouse input, or the keyboard input, the if block is there. You can see where the bird flaps, I have, it's setting the velocity. I also have a, a variable called active that checks if the bird has hit a pipe or not. Variables are interesting with the flow graph because you don't create variables in the flow graph. You add a component called variables that actually, it gets added when you add the flow graph component or the, um, the bolt component to the object, but you get a variable component and now you can create variables, you give it a name, it creates the variable, and then you can select in a drop down what type of variable it is, which it, it's kind of nice to see all your options. When you're um, programming C Sharp, especially for me since I'm still learning, I Google pretty much everything. I look up, if I want to learn to do something, I look it up, and then from there I learn, hey, you can do this. With the flow graph, it, you have all the code at you right there. You can click around, you can look at blocks, there's an explanation of what everything does underneath the code option. So it would be really nice if I could get the programmer text to work, so that way I can look at each of the blocks and kind of read what they do, so then I can transition that, what I learned from that, over to C Sharp. However, I couldn't get the programmer text to work. Something that threw me off a little bit is the fact that you can have multiple events. What I mean by that is you can use the update event twice. I don't think you can do that. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but you can have two event systems. So I don't know if you're allowed to do this, but you can have two update events. This, I think, is because, for example, let's say you have the if block, right? In C Sharp, you can see where the if block starts and when it stops. You can see that. The curly brackets kind of mark where it closes off. However, in the flow graph, you can't close off the if block. It just ends whenever the true or false code ends. So let's say you want to have more code run every second. You either have to put the if block last in the update event, or you can add another update event in the flow graph, and then you can run more code there, which was interesting. Yeah, you can have two on trigger enter 2Ds, and I know you cannot have two on trigger enters. That is just not allowed. I would say the biggest benefit to the flow graph is being able to use it to learn programming. I wouldn't use it, I would not use it to make a game. That, I think, programming will always be the best way to make a game. I don't think any visual scripting will replace that. However, it's really, really good to learn the engine and learn programming. Even if the syntax and all the format is completely different to regular programming, it could be really, it could be a really useful tool to learn Unity. So I think that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like. That would be really cool. And thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.